so hello what's up how is everyone doing sir we are doing great you tell so i am also doing really really well and today in this class today in this revision session we are going to begin with amazing topic we are going to begin with an amazing topic called bank audit so first of all let me tell you sabse pehle main aapko ye bata dun this topic is very 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 scoring from exam point of view you can expect questions of around 6 to 8 marks in your exam lagbhag 6 se 8 number ka aapko paper isme se dikh sakta hai sir if we talk about the topics let's begin with it so sabse pehle what is that which makes this topic a different from the other topics like what are the special audit considerations which we need to keep in mind while we are doing the bank audit so first thing is the particular nature of risk first thing is the particular nature of risk which is associated with the transaction sir why is there such high risk why is there such high risk because because of the scale of banking operations because of the scale of banking operations you would have seen that now everyone is having mobile phone in their hands everyone is having access to the mobile phones everyone is having access to the net banking since everyone is having access to the net banking people are doing daily bank transactions and every single moment there are so many bank transactions to handle that there is a lot of risk that any transaction can fail so what is the first point sir particular nature of risk why is the risk so much there because of the significant exposure which can arise in a very short period of time second thing how is this significant exposure happening how is this significant exposure getting increased day by day the main reason is it the main reason is it the banks are extensively dependent on it banks are extensively dependent on it and it is through it they are developing new products and services it is through it that they are developing new products and services so first four points are particular nature of risk what is the risk there are large number of transactions in a very short span of time how are they able to do it because of the extensive dependence on extensive dependence on it and it is through it they are creating a lot of new products and services which are not matched by which may not be matched by concurrent development of accounting principles and auditing practices and similar point related to it is evolution of technology and providing services through net banking and mobiles has again exposed the bank to operational and financial risk so sir what are the four five points that you need to keep in mind while answering a question regarding the special audit consideration so mention there is a particular nature of risk associated with banking operation why because in a very short span of time in a very short span of time huge scale of operations can occur in a bank how sir due to the it there is extensive dependence on it which is leading to the development of new products and services and these new products and services development is not matched by concurrent development of accounting principles and auditing practices next point what is the legal framework associated with bank audit so please understand banks have to comply with the basic basic acts if there is a banking company it will comply with companies act 2013 if there is a banking regulation act it should be 1949 banking regulation act 1949 then comes prevention of money laundering act 2002 you must have studied it in law then rbi being the banker of the banks you need to comply with rbi act 1934 if it is sbi then sbi act 1955 plus as i told you they are heavily they are heavily dependent on technology so it act 2000 what are the different types of act companies act 2000 pmla that is the pamla pmla 2002 then information technology act 2000 sbi act 1955 and rbi act 1934 now sir when an auditor gets appointed when an auditor gets appointed what are the contents of appointment letter so first of all this there is mostly a joint audit in banks mostly there is a joint audit in banks that is the banks are audited by four or more joint auditors four or more joint auditors so four or more ca firms will act as a statutory central auditor that means branch auditors will be different central auditors will be different first of all they will be told the period of appointment and then they will be given the details of other auditors and previous auditor period of appointment details of other auditors details of previous auditor plus before they accept the appointment before they accept the assignment they have to comply with certain procedural requirements so four points what are the four points period of appointment details of previous auditor details of other current auditors and the procedural requirements they need to comply with 
then they will be told the scope of assignment as it is also said in essay 210 agreeing the terms of audit engagement scope of assignment will be told to them since they are working with other auditors they are working with other auditors a statement of division of work and reporting requirements shall also be prepared so please remember these four to five points sir what are the four to five points period of appointment scope of assignment period of appointment scope of assignment details of other auditors and details of and the details of what so details of previous auditor and as someone told joint audit sc 299 will be applicable so a statement of division of work will be prepared and also shared with the management got it sir now who is the authority who shall be appointing the auditor who shall be the authority who shall appoint the auditor so in case of a banking company since companies act 2013 is applicable it will be similar as it is in case of other companies that is the appointment by the shareholders at the AGM say it after me appointment by the shareholders at the AGM he will be appointed at the AGM by the shareholder in case of a nationalized bank appointment shall be by the board of directors again in case of nationalized bank appointment shall be by the board of directors plus in both these cases in both these cases approval of RBI is required I am sure the book that you will be having it may not be structured like this but the same thing is written there okay now comes SBI sir SBI is State Bank of India which is a government bank in that the appointment shall be by C and AG why C and AG because SBI is a government company and we have studied in section 139 subsection 5 right appointment of subsequent auditor in case of government company that is done by C and AG but in consultation with central government now regional rural banks Please remember that it is difficult to visit the regional rural bank. So, these bank appoint the, their own auditor. These bank appoint their own auditor with the approval of central government. Remember, here it is consultation. Here it is consultation. Here it is approval of central government. I hope these four points are clear. Now, let's talk about conduct of audit. Now, let's talk about conduct of audit. How the bank audit is conducted. So, first of all, initial consideration. Initial considerations means you have not yet started the audit you have not yet started your risk assessment procedure further audit procedure nothing you are just considering the initial things sir what are the initial considerations i think we discussed in the class also adi adi to see planning team batao bolo mere saath say it after me adi to see planning team dasso ya batao jo bolna hai bolo theek hai Sir, what was the point? Adi means acceptance and continuance of client relationships. Acceptance and continuance of client relationship. Can anyone tell me what are the points that we consider in accepting and continuing the client relationship? They are given in SA 220. They are given in SA 220 that is SECI. That is the significant matters that arose in the previous engagement and in the current audit engagement. E for ethical requirements. Relevant ethical requirements to be complied with the engagement team before accepting the audit and after accepting the audit. C for competence, capability, time and resources. Say it after me. Competence, capability, time and resources. Whether the engagement team has competence, capability, timing and resources to complete the audit effectively. And then comes integrity. Integrity of the client, owners, principals, owners and TCWG. Very good, Jaya. Very good, Sanya. Too proud of you. Now, sir. D for declaration of indebtedness. It says if you are indebted to the bank. If you are indebted to the bank, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot accept the statutory audit. Sir, indebted means none of your account should have become NPS. You should not be bad people. Say it again. You should not be bad people, your account. Neither your family member's account. Neither your account nor your family member's account should have become NPS by, with the bank or any other branches. Sir, I for internal assignments. So, as we have also studied in professional ethics, if you are the internal auditor of an entity, you can't become the statutory auditor. If you are an internal auditor of an entity, you can't be the statutory auditor. Similarly, if you are having internal assignments with the bank, don't accept the statutory audit. R, D. A for acceptance and continuance. D for declaration of indebtedness. I for initial consideration. To C. T for Terms of audit engagement as per SA 210. As per SA 210, agree the terms of audit engagement that is the scope and objective of audit, responsibilities of the management, responsibilities of the auditor, plus financial reporting framework and the auditing reporting. That or those are the five points which are generally covered in the engagement letter. Now, sir, to C, C means communication with the previous auditor as per clause 8, part 1 of first schedule to Chartered Accountant Act 1949. Adi, to see planning team, planning and team, audit planning and audit team, establishing the audit engagement team. Then comes the point of risk assessment procedures. 
Then comes the point of risk assessment procedure that is SA 315, identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement. How? Through understanding the entity and its environment. So, first of all, you understand the bank and its environment, including internal control. Then you understand the accounting process and risk management process. Sir, what is the risk management process? First of all, it will be taken care by the TCWG. It will be taken care by the TCWG and in as in every risk management process, first of all, you identify the risk, then controls for them. As I told you in the class, risk hai to control hai. Risk hai to control hai. For every risk, there should be control. And for risk, you need to do three things. Identification, measurement, monitoring. Say it after me. Identification, measurement and monitoring. That is the identification, measurement and monitoring of risk. Please, please preserve it for the fourth point. Please preserve it for the fourth point. You will not be able to recall the fourth point because the fourth point is hidden here. So identification, measurement and monitoring of risk. And for every risk, we have a control. So next point comes the control activities. For those who have studied the chapter number three from me, they will remember. Sir, the control activities are pipes, authorization, performance review, I for information processing, which includes your application and your application and your general 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 controls then comes p for physical controls and s for segregation of duties if you are not able to recall these points of control activities it's high time you revise chapter number three mark it in your head next point sir monitoring activities as i told you please keep the monitoring part for the fourth point and in the end how do you monitor we need the information say it after me how do you monitor sir we need the information from where will you get it reliable information systems reliable information systems. so these are the five points of understanding risk management process oversight by tcwg that will take care of the whole risk management process then the risk and control imm of risk identification measurement monitoring then comes the part of monitoring activities and how do you monitor through the information provided by reliable information system then comes the part of risk assessment just for reading purpose, sir, what are the risk assessment point? Identification and assessment of the risk. Then you also assess the risk of fraud because it can involve money laundering in case of banks plus assessing any specific risk regarding the banking industry and use of IT as initially discussed in the revision of this chapter plus the risk of outsourcing the activities. So four points of risk, risk of material misstatement, risk of fraud, specific risk and the risk of outsourcing the activities. Then comes execution, please read it and then the reporting which we will discuss later in this chapter. Now sir, every bank operates in an IT environment. Every bank operates in an IT environment. So what are the things that you gonna see as an auditor? First of all, First of all, for having the information, for having the information, it is imperative that bank should share the following information with the auditor. So ICI will ask you the question, for studying the IT environment, what information do you need from the bank? What information should bank share with you? So first point is IT policy. First point is the IT policy structure and environment of the bank IT system. Then we discuss two points of data. So what were the two points of data? Data processing and data interface under various system. Data processing and data interface under the various system, but we need to be sure that the data is right. That is the data integrity, how it is protected by the data security. Data integrity, how it is protected by the data security. So again, three points, IT policy, which shows which shows the IT policy structure and environment of the bank's IT system. Then comes data processing and data interface. Data processing and data interface, data security and data integrity. Then comes the next point, controls around the data. Controls around the data, controls over the key aspects around use of various accounting heads, expense booking and overdue identification. Overdue identification specifically in case of NPS. So controls around the key aspects like accounting heads, overdue identification, expense booking. Then comes the controls around e-banking and internet banking products. Controls around the accounting heads, expense heads and overdue identification. Then comes the controls around internet banking and e-banking facilities. Even if you are able to remember these five points, I think it's more than enough. And the last two points are MIS reports as they are generated in every business and the major exception reports plus you need to see the embedded logic based on which logic they are getting these exception reports. These are the four to five points that you need to remember. Let's revise it again for you. Okay. First point overall IT policy. Overall IT policy structure of the bank. Okay. This is the first point. Second point data interface. So data interface and data processing. Once you have seen the interface, you process the data. Say it with me. Once you have seen the interface, you process the data. Next point is regarding your data integrity and data security. Integrity is protected by the security. Then controls. 
controls which which are around internet banking e banking controls regarding expense booking and the controls regarding overdue identification and last two points were mis reports and exceptional reporting sir who has at what level at what level will the review of IT environment and computerized accounting system will take place at the head office level? Branch auditors generally don't have access to the IT policy. Branch auditors don't have access to such policies and the processes implemented by bank. Hence, they have to rely on the information received from central statutory auditor or the statutory central auditors. So, such statutory central auditors will share the details and the information with the branch auditor and branch auditors Branch auditors will carry out the test of control and substantive checking and these results will be shared with the central auditors. So central auditors will share the policy, guide the branch auditors to perform their test of controls and substantive procedure. Whatever procedures that the branch auditors will perform, they will share the results with the, with the, with the, with the head office auditors. Got it sir. Now comes the point, what are the key control aspects? What are the key control areas or key control aspects that the auditor needs to address while undertaking an audit in a computerized bank? So first thing he needs to make sure that the data is accurate. Authorized, accurate and complete data is available for processing. The data is absolutely right. Second thing, whenever the bank, bank, bankers are processing their transaction, if the power goes off, if the power goes off, system restarts without affecting the completion of entries and records. Next thing, they, it prevents unauthorized amendments to the program. It prevents unauthorized amendments to the program. There is segregation of duties and balance in general ledger tallies with the subsidiary book. So these are the five points that you need to remember. Again, authorized, accurate and complete data is available. Unauthorized amendments are avoided. See, authorized, unauthorized. Authorized data is available, unauthorized amendments are protect, uh, avoided. In case of power failure, system restarts without affecting the completion of power entries. That means the system is very, very good. And the last point was general ledger tallies with the subsidiary ledger. Basically, the books of accounts tally with each other. Then comes this point, concept of risk-based internal audit. I feel you should read it yourself. Just read it once, once yourself because there are so many risk-based audits that we have studied in this whole audit course. That anything can be asked and anything can strike your mind at the time of your giving the examination. So just hope for the best, just hope to the God that you get the right point. Okay? So please revise it on your own. Then we are moving to the next topic that is the internal controls. Please stay with me. Please stay with me. Now we are moving to the amazing concept of internal controls. Take a water break. Take a one minute water break. Relax your mind, relax yourself and then we'll move ahead. We are here to fight people, we are here to fight, not give up, okay? So just maintain your calm, just relax and just stay with me. All right, internal controls. So sir, what are the internal controls? Let's discuss it out. Let's discuss it out, forget the notes, let's discuss the internal controls. So the first thing, they say that apply the concept of job rotation. They say apply the concept of job rotation, staff of the bank should be shifted from one position to another. Internal check should be there, that is the work of one person should be checked by another. So job rotation, internal check. Arithmetical accuracy should be proved independently every day. That means everything should be arithmetically accurate. Every person should check, ki, yeah, totaling is right, subtraction is right, everything is done, 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 done. Okay, sir. Three points, job rotation, internal check and arithmetical accuracy should be all good. Then comes the point of stationary. Sir, what is the point of stationary? All the bank forms, that is the demand draft, uh, pay order books, traveler checks, etc. They should be in the position of one officer and another officer should verify the issuance and stock of such stationary. Similarly, if you get any mails, if you get any demand draft from outside, they should be opened by a responsible officer and signature, signature on those demand draft should be checked with the signature book by the officer having access to the signature book. Now sir, who should have access to the signature book? Only the responsible officers plus access should only be allowed to the authorized officer. They should be with the responsible officer and access only to the authorized officer. This is all that you need to remember about the general controls. Let's revise it again. First three basic points, let's uh, steal them from chapter 3 that is the risk assessment and internal control. First point is job rotation. Staff should be rotated from one position to another without even telling them. Then comes the next point work done by one person should be checked by another. Third point arithmetical accuracy should be proved. Then comes the points of 
स्टेशनरी इन केस देर आर एनी अनयूटिलाइज स्टेशनरी लाइक बैंक ड्राफ्ट ट्रेवलर चेक्स और एनी अदर स्टेशनरी ब्ला 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 That stationery should be under the custody of a responsible officer. So another officer should see how this stationery is issued and who is keeping a check of the stock. Plus, if you are getting any demand drafts, if you are getting any mails from outside, please make sure that the signature is checked by the person having access to the signature book, who should also be a responsible officer. And if we talk about the signature book or the telegraphic code book. who should have access to it responsible officer and uh, who sh who should have the position of it possession possession should be with the responsible officer plus access should only be allowed to the authorized officer then bank should take a insurance policy against the loss due to infidelity that is the employees employees can any any time have integrity issues plus there can be theft or natural calamity so it is imperative imperative for any bank to have insurance policies plus surprise check should also be involved so you can read these last two points but try to try to remember the first five six points then comes the point of cash sir if i talk about cash again it should be under the joint custody repeat it after me cash should be under the joint custody of two responsible officers it should be it should be test checked every day it says it should be test checked daily but counted in full occasionally then the balance cash balance should be tallied with the uh, cash balance should be tallied with the ledger so and the customer sorry and, and the cashier who is having the access to cash should have no access to the customer ledger and the day book which is the basic rule of segregation of duty which is the basic rule of the segregation of duty sir what are the three points first point joint custody second point test check daily count in full occasionally and the third point says cashier should have no access to the customer ledger payment should be made only after the vouchers have been passed for payment plus high value cash payments and receipts should be verified by higher officer or manager sir what are the five points let's recall them again let's recall them again first point under whose custody cash should be there under the joint custody second point it should be test checked daily and counted in full on rare occasions theek hai third point segregation of duties person having access to the cash that is the cashier should not have access to the customer books or the day book fourth point If I talk about high value payments, this these cash payments should only be done when the vouchers have passed for payment. And the fifth point was high value cash receipts and payments should undergo a scrutiny by a higher officer or branch manager. Then we discussed about the concept of check truncation system. Sir, what happens in check truncation system? I give the check to my bank. I have received the check from my friend. I give the check to my friend, my bank, and the bank. transfers its electronic image via rbi to the other bank then the other bank approves the payment and my bank account gets credited and my friend's bank account gets debited so this is all about the concept of check truncation system plus as per the rbi guidelines as per the rbi guidelines if the check amount is 5 lakh and above if the check amount is 5 lakh and above then the paying bank paying bank has to verify from the customer second third thing sign of the drawer of the check is being verified by the staff and if they don't verify it will be the liability of the paying bank so if my friend who has made me the payment if it if its bank doesn't verify the sign again it will be the liability of that bank and the last point is if i am giving the check to my bank and my bank account remains uncredited if my bank account remains uncredited again my bank will give the check back to me so these are the four points first of all the concept of check truncation system then the rbi rule of 5 lakh and above that the person whose account is debited needs to be intimated third point if the sign is not verified it is the liability of the paying bank and the fourth point is if my check remains unpaid it shall be returned back to me now comes the concept of bill for collection i hope you remember we discussed it with the help of an example that i pres i present the bill for collection and the documents to my bank my bank transfers that bill for collection and documents to the other branch which is located in the importer's country that branch helps me in collecting the payment and provides the documents to the importer so when the payment is collected my account is credited when that payment is collected my account is credited so make sure that the documents are registered and entered received and entered in the register by responsible officer at the time of dispatch make sure that the documents are sent along with the bills yani when my branch is sending the documents when my branch is sending the documents to its other branch located in the importer's country it is sending with the bills for collection and my account is credited only when the bills have been collected from the importer or advice has been received from the bank branch that they uh, that they have received the payment ensure that bill sent by one branch to another branch is not taken in bills for collection twice 
This should not be taken in bills for collection twice. So who has to give up? Sir, receiving branch has to give up. Receiving branch needs to reverse the entries at the end of the year for closing purpose. So three points you need to remember. Only responsible officer will receive the documents and enter all the details in the register. Make sure that the branch is not only sending the document but also sending the bills for collection. My account is getting credited only when the bills have been actually collected by the paying by the other branch. And the last point is bills for collection should not be entered twice in the balance sheet. The receiving branch has to reverse the entry. Receiving branch has to reverse the entry. That's all about bills for collection. Now about sir bills purchased. Bills purchased is basically the basic entry of bills discounting. Whenever you get your bills discounted with the bank, bank deducts a security margin. Bank deducts a security margin and takes the control over the documents of title. So two points documents of title gets transferred to the bank. It deducts a security margin and the next point if it is unable to collect on due date, it should take immediate steps to recover the amount. And irregular accounts, irregular accounts should be reported to head office. So these are the four points you need to remember. Documents of title for bill discounting are transferred to the bank. Bank doesn't give you full money, it takes a security margin out of it. Then comes the next two points, sir. What are the next two points? If the bank is unable to collect on due date, it will take immediate steps to recover. If it can't recover the amount, it will report to head office and if the bills purchased outstanding at the year end, then the whatever be the discount, whatever be the discount income, whatever be the discount income, it is apportioned between the two years. Some portion will go to the current year and some portion will go to the next year because in the next year, actual money will be realized. So that's the basic concept of revenue recognition. I hope bills purchased is clear. Yes, sir. Now comes the concept of loans and advances. Very much in nature of bills purchased. Very much in nature of bills purchased. In bills purchased, you are getting a short term kind of loan. But in case of loans and advances, you are taking a long term loan. First of all, what will you check of the other party? Credit worthiness. If the credit worthiness is okay, you can grant the loan. Make sure all the documents are executed. Make sure all the necessary documents are executed. Then you talk about the margin. Sufficient margin should be there. Security should be received only by the responsible officer returned only by the responsible officer plus they should be registered in the name of bank sir we discussed about the drawing power we discussed about the drawing power all the accounts all the accounts should be kept within the drawing power i am sure you must have studied this in intermediate also okay now when i am taking the inter classes i am feeling very bad huh we have already covered we have already covered the same concept in intermediate and this is a bonus I must say this is a bonus by ICI that they are asking the same thing at CA final level and we forget. Oh, funny world. So account should be kept within the drawing power and sanction limit as per the norms. But additional limit, this is a new point for CA final, huh? it is not there in intermediate. Additional limit up to 20% can be given but maximum for 90 days because after 90 days banks become fearful. After 90 days, banks become fearful because after 90 days, an account becomes an NPA. So all the irregular accounts need to be reported to head office as it happens in the case of business bills purchased and operation in each advance account should be reviewed at least once a year. I think there is a RTP. I think there is a RTP or MTP question on this that operation of each account should be reviewed at least once a year. Can we revise this topic again because I think it's very important from exam point of view. Yes, sir. Loans and advances. First of all, check the credit worthiness of the other party. If it is okay, execute all the documents. Make sure all the documents are executed before the amount is credited to the other party. Plus, you need to have adequate security. Sufficient margin should be there. Security should be taken and returned by a responsible officer registered in the name of bank. All the accounts should be kept within the drawing power and sanction limit. Drawing power and the sanction limit. Additional, additional, how much can be given? 20%. But for how many days? Maximum 90 days. Irregular account needs to be reported to head office and operation should be reviewed at least once in a year. So what about the de demand drafts? Demand drafts are the easiest topic. Check the signature of demand draft. Okay? Credit the account. Credit the account only when you have re received the advice from the paying branch. And the last point is if the paying branch has not given any confirmation or credit in the account, steps should be taken to ascertain the reasons why the paying branch, why the issuing branch has not sent any debit advice. So please make sure you are referring to that diagram that we made in the class that I go to the branch, get the demand draft, give it to ICI, okay? ICI's account gets credited, my account gets debited. So these are the points that you need to remember. Next point, credit card operations and after credit card operations, we'll take a two minutes break. So credit card operations talks about what? 
whenever i need to get a credit card i need to give my application to the bank i need to give my application to the bank so first of all bank will do the screening of application when it is done with the screening of application it will issue a credit card out of the stationery of all the cards maintained by it so there should be proper control over the storage and issue of cards once they have given me the card i will go to the merchant and swipe the card i will go to the merchant and swipe the card so whenever i swipe the card prompt reporting should be done to the bank prompt reporting should be done to the bank and when bank will pay to the merchant when bank will pay to the merchant my account will be my account will be debited so it says reimbursements to the merchant should be made only after verification and all the reimbursements should be charged to the customer account once they are charged to the customer account at the end of the month a monthly statement is given to the customer so there should be a system to ensure statements are sent regularly plus if the customer doesn't make the payment on time follow up should be done with the customer so if a four or five marker question is asked please make sure you are writing the exact four or five points out of this effective screening of applications control over storage and issue of cards then comes the point of prompt reporting prompt reporting whenever i swipe a card at the merchant there should be prompt reporting to the bank then bank should reimburse the merchant only after verifying that the payment has been genuine and once they reimburse they will charge to the customer account all the monthly charges for all the monthly charges a monthly statement should be sent regularly to the customer and if the customer doesn't pay on time follow up should be done for the customer's payment please tell me are you all there with me till here are you all there with me till here quickly let me know we got 35 minutes i think it's we are going good enough it's a good enough speed Come on, enjoying the revision? <laughs> Just take a small water break. Just take a small water break of two minutes. Okay. Are you done with the break? Come on, come on. Yes, sir, yes, sir, we are back. Da -da 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 -da. SLR CRR requirement. SLR CRR requirement, that is something we are going to start. But then, now I am feeling back in my exam days. Now I am feeling that pressure of my exam days. Just have one and a half hour, just have one hour, I have to complete the chapter. And those jitters, just completed a topic, let me revise it again. Just completed a topic, just let me revise it again. And that's how it works, my friend. That's how it works. That's the beauty of exams. You are on your toes 24-7. Now let's discuss about the amazing topic of SLR CRR requirement. SLR CRR requirement. What is SLR? What is CRR? Statutory liquidity ratio. Cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio is basically the reserves you are required to keep with RBI. So RBI tells you how much percentage of your total deposits, how much percentage of your total deposits you need to keep with RBI. So sir, as an auditor, need not worry about it. Just read the RBI master circular. Just read the RBI master circular. That's all that you need to do. Sir, what about statutory liquidity ratio? What about statutory liquidity ratio? That is the, that is the percentage percentage of net demand and time liabilities that is the percentage of net demand and time liabilities dtl demand and time liabilities you are required to maintain in the form of liquid assets these liquid assets can be gold jab ghar pe pada ho sona fir kahe ko rona gold cash government approved security or other liquid assets but the main game is this checking this checking of slr will take on 12 odd dates during the year not being fridays sir why not fridays fridays are meant for movies fridays are meant for movies fridays are meant for bollywood hollywood tollywood but not for slr checking so the reason is on fridays it is actually checked at the head office on fridays the slr requirement is already checked on the head office so it's better to check on the other days for checking any non compliance so verify on 12 odd dates which are not being fridays plus report to the management and rbi regarding two things demand and time liability position and maintenance of liquid assets under section 24 of banking regulation act so as an auditor what do you need to do understand the circular requirements of rbi see how the th accounts are consolidated at the head office for which weekly trial balance is sent on friday for consolidation at the purpose of head office also on the dates the dates which you have selected as an auditor which are not fridays request request the branch auditors to sit and verify the cash balance examine the consolidated demand and time liability position with reference to the branch returns now there are certain things now there are certain things which are which are which are excluded from the liabilities for the purpose of computing demand and time liabilities so first thing 
कैपिटल इज नेवर अ पार्ट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी कैपिटल इज नेवर अ पार्ट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी सो इफ देर इज एनी पेड ऑफ कैपिटल रिजर्व और एनी क्रेडिट बैलेंस इन द पी एन एल अकाउंट प्लस इफ यू हैव टेकन लोन फ्रॉम द बिग बिग बैंक इफ यू हैव टेकन लोन फ्रॉम द बिग बिग बैंक सर वॉट आर द बिग बिग बैंक एक्सिम बैंक नेशनल हाउसिंग बैंक सिडबी नबार्ड these are the big big banks even rbi so if you have taken any loan from them that will not form a part of demand and time liabilities next thing sir p for paid up share capital p for provision for doubtful debts if you had created any provision for doubtful debts for which you have received the amount you have recovered the amount again that will be excluded from the liabilities now sir what is the other thing import bills in case there was an importer in case there was an importer from whom you had to receive the money he has even given you the money he has even given you the money but you have kept that money under sundry deposits now the money which you have received from the importer again it is not your liability okay again it's your not your liability it is just that for complying with the requirement you have kept it under the sundry deposits again it will be excluded another point is unadjusted deposits or balances so for which what is happening liability of one branch has been paid by the other liability of one branch has been paid by the other so if my liability one branch liability have been paid by the other to the outside person then again it should be excluded from my liability and the last point is margins margins for funded facility so if i am providing a margin to my bank for trading in the shares and securities again that is not a part of liability for the bank so sir what are the four, four five points first point is regarding the paid up share capital and loan from big big banks second point is the provision for doubtful debts against from which the money has money has been received by the bank then comes De deposits sir whose deposits importers deposits so importers have made the payment to me which they were required to make but they have been kept as deposit kept under the heading of deposits because final rates are yet to be decided then comes the concept of unadjusted deposits or balances lying in link branches basically the concept was one branch liability has been paid by the other branch so some balances lying in the form of deposit again they don't need to form a part of your demand and time liabilities and the last point was margin facilities margin facilities or funded facilities margin is not to be kept under the head of liability what is to be included in liabilities is branch adjustment account credit balance so if a branch owes something to the other branch it should be included in the liability adverse balance in the nostro mirror account basically the amount of borrowings by the indian banks from the foreign banks amount of borrowings from the indian banks from the foreign banks they should be included in the liability and the interest accrued but not accounted interest accrued but not due you can say it like that or interest accrued but not accounted in the books that needs to be added in the liabilities so three balances credit balance in the branch adjustment account borrowings from the other foreign banks which is also known as the liability to the other or the adverse balance of nostro mirror account and the last point is interest accrued but not due or interest accrued but not accounted for so here we complete here we complete you can say the first phase first phase which i call of the bank audit here the first phase of the bank audit gets completed now let's move to the second phase that is the verification of assets in that we have balance with rbi now whichever be the entity wherever be the balance the first thing that you need to do is confirm from the other party confirm from the other party review the confirmation certificates and reconciliation so confirm from the other party and if the balance doesn't agree check the reconciliation in this reconciliation three things you need to check cash transactions remaining unresponded revenue items requiring write off cash and revenue cash and revenue cash transactions remaining unresponded revenue items requiring write off and the third point is other credit debit entries which you are not able to understand and they are remaining responded for more than 15 days that means for 15 days they have not been responded by rbi so three points what are sir cash transactions remaining unresponded revenue items which require write off basically we consider it as a revenue rbi doesn't agree so if rbi is not agree do a write off and the third point is other credit debit entries which we have no response from rbi for a period of more than 15 days sir can it be asked in mcq the answer is yes it can very much be asked in mcq similarly the discussion we had on SLR statutory liquidity ratio i remember students telling me after the exam that around 4 to 6 marks mcqs were asked in the exam on this concept so please make sure you cover it well now sir money at call and short notice this was the wonderful concept sir isme hota kya hai basically you need to take the authority of the head office you need to take the authority of the head office that is should be under the authorization plus comply with the instructions of head office how do i check it as a auditor i need to check two things the person who has borrowed 
he will get a borrower certificate right so the borrower certificate should be verified with the receipt of all loan receipts which are held by the bank so borrower certificate the person who has borrowed from the bank and the bank which has given the money will get a call loan receipt that is the same thing i will check plus since this bank that i am auditing has provided the funds to other bank it will get interest so i will also check the interest so borrower certificate interest authorization three things i have checked wonderfully now the next thing that i will check is for heavy balances outstanding at the balance sheet date for heavy balances outstanding at the balance sheet date since i know bank will get it very soon i will check the initial statements of april so for the heavy amount which are outstanding on 31st of march i will check the initial statements of april to see whether the money has been received so check the subsequent repayments very to verify the balance at the year end and remember call loans made can't be netted off with call loans received so if the bank has provided any money uh, as a call loan to the other bank and has taken call loan from different bank these two call loans cannot be netted off okay so this is all i wanted to discuss please make sure you also check the register now sir special purpose certificate again on this concept mcq is asked by ici sir what is this concept all about it just says bank can make three types of investments investment on its own account investments for its you can say pms client that is the portfolio management services that it provides to the clients or other constituents like brokers investments on behalf of the brokers whatever be the investments separate accounting should be done separate accounting should be done not only separate accounting separate audit needs to be done by the external auditor so ici can ask who needs to do the audit external auditor concurrent auditor internal auditor remember external auditor separate audit as per the rbi guidelines okay sir half yearly reviews need to be done for the investment portfolios on 30th of september and 31st of march now a new topic has been added by regarding the advances and for that you need to do certain substantive audit procedure very simple topic very very simple topic just understand with me all points will be crystal clear to you first of all you need to check the correctness of the master data so what do you mean by master data name of the person to whom you have amount advanced his pan number his aadhar number his address his bank account number customer id all the details in a proper table so verify the correctness of master data and check the parameters like installments rate of interest emi and tenure of loan next thing every customer should have a single customer id every customer should have a single customer id all the accounts should be linked to that single id got it sir so in that master data make sure you check the second thing all customers are having a single customer id now as an auditor i am more concerned with the problem accounts i am more concerned with the problem accounts and these are the sma1 sma2 that is the special mention accounts so these are the triggering points for bank so what are these accounts these are the accounts which have not yet slipped into the npa category but they can any time they can any time slip into the M N npa category so identify these problem accounts sir another point which is linked to it is those accounts which have been adversely commented by the concurrent auditor or internal auditor of the bank so problem accounts adversely commented by the internal auditor or concurrent auditor plus list of restructured accounts list of restructured accounts you must have studied about the concept of internal reconstruction in your intermediate so whatever accounts that have been restructured restructured means the principal amount was reduced the interest rate was reduced the tenure was increased anything they should be focused and remember restructured accounts require additional provisioning and the last point is quick or early mortality accounts so what do you mean by quick and early mortality accounts these are considered to be the accounts which have slipped into npa within a period of 12 months of their account opening any advance slippages to npa within 12 months of the sanction are called quick mortality account basically account jaldi chal base ye account jaldi chal base inki jaldi death ho gayi to maine kaha inko bolte hai quick mortality accounts kya advances ke substantive procedures clear hain are the advances substantive procedures clear yes sir first of all we need to check the master data in that master data we see the emi loan tenure blah 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 then make sure all the accounts are linked to a single customer id no every account is linked to its own customer id that is every account should have single customer id got it sir then we talk about problematic accounts problematic accounts number 1 sma1 sma2 which have not yet slipped into the npa category second accounts which have been adversely commented by the internal auditor or concurrent auditor or rbi inspection team 
third types of accounts which are restructured account and the fourth type of account which are called quick mortality accounts then examine all the large balances it says examine all the large balances and the small ones can be checked on sample basis check the interest amount and apply analytical procedure that's all that you need to remember this 12 months part of quick mortality accounts can be asked in form of mcqs got it got it sir now comes the concept of recoverability of advances will the bank able to get the money back so it depends on the statement submitted by the borrower so view the review the periodic statement submitted by the borrower and the latest financial statement so periodic statement latest financial statement on that financial statement check the audit report on that financial statement check the audit report plus see the report on inspection of security periodic statement financial statement audit report and inspection of security got it sir got it now comes the concept of npa sir it says under the system of core banking system under the system of core banking system there is no need of manual intervention the system will itself classify the accounts as npa if they are overdue for 90 days for more than 90 days if there are accounts with a threat to recovery if there are accounts with a threat to recovery examine the classification is appropriate particularly for those advances where there is a threat to recovery got it sir now these npas need to be segregated secured and unsecured why sir for the purpose of calculating the provision do you know that on the provi uh, there are three types of npas right substandard doubtful and then comes your loss assets in case of doubtful category in case of doubtful category in case of all unsecured doubtful 100% provision is made but if i talk about secured doubtful the percentage is vary so they are around 25% 40% and uh, i think i'm not i'm forgetting it but yeah different types of percentages are there in case of secured okay so you need to segregate the portion from secured and unsecured and accordingly calculate the provision these percentage are not given in study material so thank god next point is review and compare the date of npas mentioned in current year statement with the previous year and any reason for change should be ascertained any reason for change should be ascertained got it sir got it so these are the points of classification and provisioning so classification should be as per the core banking system provisioning should depend on the segregation in secured and unsecured whatever be the problematic accounts where there are threat to recovery make sure their classification is appropriate and the last point is compare the date of npas of current year statement with the previous year if there is any variation please check out the reasons got it sir now comes the concept of accounts regularized near the balance sheet date i think this was a very e easy concept so what does it say if i talk about 31st of march 2022 if i talk about the date of 31st march of 2022 there was an account which was classified as npa bank made, made a call to that account that please deposit your money with us before 31st of march don't worry in the first week of april only we will give you extra money in the first week of april only we'll give you extra money i showed you that example of vijay malya also so sir in that case there is a inherent weakness in the account in that case there is a inherent weakness in the account you can have you can have doubts regarding the genuineness of the source of payment because there are doubts regarding the genuineness of the source of payment you classify it as a deemed npa you classify it as a deemed npa because of in hand yeah concept of jive malya very very good sir ne bilkul sahi bola apne vijay malya ne jive malya tha wo to jive malya ka jo maine example bataya tha usme yahi tha inherent weakness hai so it will be classified as deemed npa plus this classification is always as per the position as on date this classification is always as a position or as on date and so as on the balance sheet date you need to review all the standard account if any standard account has been slipped into npa plus npas are classified on the basis of overdue concept so make sure throughout the year npas classification is continuing it should not only it should not only be based on the balance sheet date got it sir now comes the concept of drawing power calculation it is basically your working capital loans it is basically your working capital loans so it says drawing power should be calculated as per the extent guidelines or what we call the credit policy of the bank it is framed by the board of directors approved by the auditor framed by the board of directors agreed by the auditor so this is all about drawing power plus special focus special consideration should be given to the sundry creditor sir why so much special treatment for the sundry creditor my god it is current liability my friend it is current liabilities of current liabilities and stocks 
needs to be given special consideration because the game is all about working capital game is all about the working capital so special consideration should be given to proper reporting of sundry creditors and stocks and for stocks you need to do a stock audit if the funded exposure is more than the limit if the funded exposure is more than the limit you need to do a stock audit sir how much it is allowed maximum 20 percent for 90 days maximum 20 percent for 90 days how do you know sir we have already covered this under the concept of loans and advances under the internal control part. And the last point is, in case the companies are in construction business, in case the companies are in construction business, make sure the drawing power is properly calculated by reducing mobilization advance. By reducing mobilization advance, so that's all about drawing power, four points. As per the credit policy of the bank, which is also called the extent guidelines. Second part, special consideration to the current liabilities and the stock. Third part, stock audit for the entities where the funded exposure is more than the limit how much is allowed maximum 20 percent for 90 days and the last point is construction business <coughs> special consideration needs to be given for calculation of drawing power because mobilization advance needs to be reduced to calculate drawing power now sir in case there is an account with temporary deficiency do we need to classify it as npa the answer is no no need to classify it as npa but remember stock statement should not be older than three months stock statement should not be older than three months why three months because if you calculate 3 into 30, 30 days a month, 3 into 30, 90 days and 90 days is the red flag for a bank. So make sure all the stock statements are not older than 3 months. If they are older than 3 months, that means the account can be classified as irregular. Got it, got it, got it. See, the number of times you revise, the number of times you go through these topics, the more comfortable you get with them. Now sir, do the limits need to be reviewed every 180 days? Yes. They need to be review, reviewed within 180 days from the due date. If they are not reviewed within 180 days, account will be classified as NPA. Again, a one or two marker quotient, not half marker. One or two marker quotient can be easily framed. A case study type of quotient can be framed. If the limits are not reviewed within 180 days, what you will do? Classify it as NPA. Plus, asset classification should be borrower wise or facility wise? Sir, it should be borrower wise, not facility wise. Discuss too much in detail in the class, please make sure you remember this small point. Got it sir. Now comes the concept of government guaranteed advance. What about government guaranteed advance? So it basically says only and only in case of central government. If the central government has guaranteed an advance, don't classify it as NPA unless central government backs out. Unless the central government backs out, you not, need not classify the advance at, as NPA. What about income recognition? there is no exception to it. What about central uh, state government guaranteed advance? No exception to it. Only exception is classification if the advance is guaranteed by central government. You don't classify it as NPA even though it is overdue for more than 90 days. Unless the central government backs out, that is called repudiates the guarantee. Got it, sir? Got it. Now, what about agricultural advance? What about agricultural advance? So, there are two types of crops. Long duration crops, short duration crops. Long duration crops, short duration crops. Long duration crops, which, which require which require more than one year of total period of harvesting. Which require more than one year of to period including harvesting. And short duration crops are the ones which are not long duration crops. That is less than equal to one year. For the purpose of NPA provisions, if the principal or interest is overdue for one crop season in case of long duration crops. In case of short duration crops, it is overdue for two crop season, basically double. Then the account will be classified as NPA. Now, sir, who decides the crop season? Who decides the crop season? So, I say SLB committee. SLB committee, yani state level banker committee. So, it says the crop season is determined by the state level banking committee of each state. Now, what will be the master circular? So, master circular is given on lending to priority sector. Master circular on lending to priority sector tells you what advances are considered as agricultural advances and what are not considered as agricultural advances. So the advances which are considered as agricultural advances as per the master circular on lending to priority sector, only for those advances, these provisions will apply. Sir, if there is an advance which we feel is an agricultural advance but not covered by the circular, so if it is not covered by the circular, it is it will be treated as a regular advance and it will be classified as NPA on the same basis as non-agricultural advance. What about the restructured advances? 
what about the restructured advances so restructuring is an act for economic or legal reasons please read the definition it may involve modification of advance so modification means changes in the term of repayment changes in interest rate changes in principal amount anything so you should as an auditor check the compliance with the circular banks can't restructure an account with retrospective effect remember this point if an application has been received for restructuring that means the account is intrinsically weak if an account is intrinsically weak it cannot be classified as standard and accounts will be downgraded once restructuring is done they will be downgraded from standard to substandard and npas will remain in the same category so if an account was already substandard it will remain as substandard if an account was d1 that is doubtful one doubtful one d2 doubtful 2 d3 doubtful 3 so that npa remains in the same category but standard becomes substandard so first of all definition of restructuring that you do modify the terms and all in case of economic distress legal reasons and grants the concessions to the borrower it involves modification of terms that is the change of interest rate repayment period sanction of additional credit blah 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 it in you as an auditor need to comply with the requirements of circular and what accounts can be uh, restructured standard substandard and doubtful sir what about the loss assets loss assets can't be restructured again standard substandard and doubtful can be restructured plus this cannot be done with retrospective effect you need to do it with prospective effect now sir upgradation of account can an account be upgraded yes only as per the rbi guidelines Sometimes there is a possibility of incorrect upgradation basis the partial recovery. Make sure, make sure this is not done by the bank. And the last point is, there can be a possibility of recoveries being made in the account after the cutoff date. And the account being upgraded on the balance sheet date, again this is wrong. Make sure upgradation is happening only and only when the am amount has been received before the balance sheet date or as on the balance sheet date. So this is a point you just need to read because I think it has not yet been asked by ICI in any of the exams. But still read it. If it is asked, at least you can write something relevant. Now sir, the question is about sale and purchase of NPAs. Can we sale and purchase an NPA? Answer is yes. If an NPA has been remaining in your books for a period of two years, plus the sale and purchase should be as per the policy of the board. Board of directors will frame a policy. NPA which has been there in your books for at least two years plus this sale will be on non-recourse basis or without recourse basis that will that means first of all you will sell it for cash that means you have seen that credit is not working in your favor so you will sell it for cash plus you will not buy it again once sold it is sold all the risk of that NPA transfer with it that's all that you need to remember now sir special points for a sale of NPA First of all, when you have sold, you can't buy it back. If you have sold it for a profit, can you recognize profit? Answer is no. Whatever excess you have received, you will retain it for future in case there is a loss on any other NPA. In case there is a loss on sale of NPA, book it to PNL. That's all that you need to remember. What are the points of purchase of NPA? First of all, classification will be the same as it was in the uh, case of seller bank. Okay. Got it, sir. Any recovery will be first adjusted against the acquisition cost. Any excess that you receive will be considered as profit. For the purpose of capital adequacy ratio, 100% risk weight will be allocated to such kind of NPS purchase from other banks. Now comes the concept of stationary and stems. No need to read anything. Just remember, internal controls need to be seen. Generally, this expense is debited to PNL. But if you are buying bulk papers, what I think that was the concept. If you are buying bulk purchase of security papers, they will be valued at cost and written off over a period of time. And written off over a period of time and that's the only exceptional item of expenditure. Check the internal control verification at year end and check the cost, 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 what is cost? Cost, cost is charged to PNL account. So four points. Generally it is charged to PNL account but exceptional items, exceptional items like bulk purchase of security paper will be treated as an asset and written off over a period of time. Second thing, internal controls. Third thing, physical verification at year end, just like your inventory. And the fourth thing is, charge the cost to PNL account. Now, sir, non-banking assets acquired in satisfaction of claims. What is a non-banking asset? So, it should include those properties which you have received after winning the court cases and all. So, only those involved properties which the bank has acquired as in satisfaction of debts 
एंड विच आर हेल्ड विद एन इंटेंशन ऑफ डिस्पोज ऑफ तो बेसिकली सामने वाला पर्सन द अदर पर्सन डिड नॉट पे द डेट टू यू सो दैट मोडगेज प्रॉपर्टी यू सोल्ड इन द मार्केट ठीक है सो दैट इज कॉल्ड द नॉन बैंकिंग एसिड एक्वायर्ड इन सेटिस्फेक्शन ऑफ क्लेम यू शुड हैव अ डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस दैट दिस इज योर प्रॉपर्टी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कोर्ट ऑर्डर और अवार्ड ऑफ आर्बिट्रेशन इफ यू एंड थ्रू दैट डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस ऑडिटर विल चेक द ओनरशिप through that documentary evidence auditor will check the ownership so the three points are first of all the definition of uh, non banking assets acquired in satisfaction of claims includes only those immoveable properties which you have received in satisfaction of your claims and these are being held with the uh, purpose of being disposed of you are not going to use them second thing you need to have proper documentation which shows that it is your property auditor will check the ownership if the ownership is disputed as 29 provisions will get attracted also make sure you compliance with section 9 section 9 says if you have acquired such property sale or dispose of within a period of 7 years sale or dispose of within a period of 7 years and the last point is it should be valued at lower of net book value of the advance or nrv of the asset net book value of the advance or net realizable value of the asset this is the valuation of this property here the asset part gets completed here our asset parts get completed let's revise it again non banking assets acquired in satisfaction of claims so first of all those immovable properties which have been acquired by the bank for satisfaction of claims and they are being held with the purpose of being subsequent dispose of they should have proper documentary evidence for it third point auditor will check the ownership if the ownership is disputed provision as per as 29 needs to be created fourth point check the compliance with section 9 that it should be disposed of within a period of 7 years and fifth point is it should be valued at cost cost nahi tha net book value sir net book value of the advance or nrv of the asset whichever is lower please tell me is everything till here clear are you all there with me come on people we are just left with another 20% of bank audit 80% bank audit done 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 nbv or nrv whichever is lower very very good come on come on turn the radio on can we move ahead yes sir now comes the concept of verification of capital in that you need to understand the concept of capital adequacy ratio and i'm sure you are very much thorough with it what it says capital adequacy ratio capital divided by the risk weighted assets into 100 banks need to maintain a minimum crar of 9% stress testing and basel framework i will request you please read it on your own please read it on your own please read it once or twice it's pure theory nothing practical here just read it on your own after this revision session now comes the concept of bills payable one of my favorites MTP October 2019. ठीक है. So this can be asked in exam. Three points you need to remember. First of all, the internal controls. ठीक है. Now sir, what is a bills payable? What do you understand by a bills payable? It is basically that demand draft part only. It is basically that demand draft part only. Sir, Basel में art point भी आर्डर्ड. यहाँ art. Basel is an art ability to absorb the shocks. R for risk management and governance and T for transparency and disclosure. Sanya, you are too good. Yeah. Sanya, you are too good. Everyone who is watching the video, please write this mnemonic: Art, ability to absorb the shocks, risk management and governance practices, and transparency and disclosure standards. Three marker question आ गया ना? Sanya, you are getting laddus from everyone. Bills payable, you need to check the internal control. So, what are the internal controls that we need to check? So, please remember. What is bills payable? Let's understand through a small example. I contacted my bank, ICICI Bank. ठीक है, दे इशूड मी अ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट वॉट डिड आई डू आई पेड दम मनी आई पेड दम मनी आई टुक दिस डिमांड ड्राफ्ट टू एस बी आई आई टुक दिस डिमांड ड्राफ्ट टू एस बी आई ओके सर नाउ वेन आई गिव दिस डिमांड ड्राफ्ट टू एस बी आई एस बी आई क्रेडिटेड द अकाउंट ऑफ आई सी आई आई नीडेड टू मेक अ पेमेंट टू आई सी आई नाउ हु विल गिव द मनी टू एस बी आई सर दिस मनी दैट आई सी आई सी आई हैज टेकन फ्रॉम मी This money that ICICI has taken from me, it will pay back to SBI. It will pay back to SBI. So can I say this is a bills payable? This is a bills payable for ICICI Bank. The answer is yes. So it say it says drafts and mail transfer should be in standard printed forms. They should be in standard printed forms. These are the internal controls basically. Okay, sir. 
अनयूज्ड फॉर्म्स शुड बी अंडर द कस्टडी ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल ऑफिसर सो स्टैंडर्ड प्रिंटेड फॉर्म्स अनयूज्ड फॉर्म्स अंडर द कस्टडी ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल ऑफिसर प्लस बैंक शुड हैव अ रिलायबल प्राइवेट कोड ठीक है बैंक शुड हैव अ रिलायबल प्राइवेट कोड टन 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 टारा which is known only to the responsible officers of the branches and coding and decoding should only be done by the officers so either they can do use the signatures for verifying the genuineness or they can use the private code so three points standard printed form forms under the custody of responsible officer and private code known only to the responsible officers and another point of verification is signature signature should be verified with the specimen signature book and the last point is all the tts and demand draft issued by the branch so this icici branch whatever demand draft it is issuing it should conform to the sbi branch they should be immediately conformed by advices to the branches concerned that is sbi in our case when the sbi makes the payment whenever sbi makes the payment to icici it will send a debit advice to the branch so debit advice means it will debit the icici branch because it needs to take payment from it okay so it's a revision i can't be more <laughs> slower than this i have already explained the concept and i have explained the bills payable part again we need to check the internal controls sir internal controls is all about the forms the form should be standard they should be under the custody of responsible officers two way of verification signature and your private code tan 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 tara and the last point is whatever telegraphic transfers and demand drafts are issued they should be conformed they should be conformed by advice to the paying branch and the paying branch should check whether they have received the advice if the paying branch has paid they will debit the other branch second thing sir what do we need to do as an auditor once you have seen the internal control check the sample of outstanding items check the sample of outstanding items comprised in bills payable with relevant registers checking the samples with the registers and reasons for old outstanding debits old outstanding debits in respect of drafts or other similar instruments paid without advice should be ascertained what it says sir if sbi if sbi has made any payment if sbi has made any payment without receiving any without receiving any information from icici bank then you should check why did it make payment without receiving the advice so second thing is checking the sample with the register and if any payment has been made without advice you need to check as an auditor and the third part is correspondence with other branches after the year end should be checked for examining the outstanding balance on the balance sheet date so three points are internal control which is all about the forms signature and code second point is checking the sample balances with the register and the third point is examining the subsequent events aap isko subsequent events ka naam bhi de sakte ho this is basically the subsequent events you are checking the events after the balance sheet date on how the correspondence are taking place between the branch and the other bank now sir comes the concept of contingent liabilities in contingent liabilities this question was asked by icici in may 22 exam so can i skip it please allow me can i skip it please allow me please tell me fast can we skip this part can we skip to the good part ta ta na 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 come on batao this portion has already been asked in may 22 and i don't think these people are so crazy that they will ask it again so let's skip it okay i am skipping it at your own risk at your own risk theek hai at your own risk you can revise it after the class theek hai don't leave it at least read it now comes contingent liabilities presentation in this presentation basically they talk about different types of contingent liability and i think there is an mcq on this in your mcq booklet there is an mcq on this in your mcq booklet sir what are the points first of all claims against the bank not acknowledged as bad debt as debts second point partly paid up investments partly paid up investment that is the face value is 10 you have paid up and called up was 8 so 2 is still pending so it can be anything any time called up outstanding forex contracts outstanding forex contracts so the forex contracts transactions which you deal with in your sfm such kind of forex contracts are a contingent liability for the bank guarantees which are given on behalf of the constituents what do you mean by constituents subsidiaries associates such kind of entities and aeo o aeo o advance accounts yaad aana chahiye isse acceptance endorsements and other obligations so these are the examples of contingent liabilities let's revise revise them again first of all claims against the bank which are not acknowledged as debt claim has been made but it is still not my debt second point 
पार्टली पेड अप इन्वेस्टमेंट थर्ड पॉइंट गारंटीज विच आर गिवन एईओ एक्सेप्टेंस इंडोर्समेंट एंड अदर ऑब्लिगेशन एंड लाइबिलिटीज ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ फॉर एक्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लास्ट पॉइंट इज अदर आइटम्स फॉर विच बैंक मे बी कंटिजेंटली लाइबल सो प्लीज रिवाइज दीज पॉइंट टू और थ्री टाइम्स आई एम श्योर यू विल बी एबल टू राइट थ्री और फोर ऑफ दम इन एग्जाम नाउ सर वॉट आर द ऑडिट प्रोसीजर्स तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बेसिक फंडा फॉर कंटेंजेंट लाइबिलिटी ऑडिट प्रोसीजर इज यूज द वर्ड इंटरनल कंट्रोल इन ऑल ऑफ देम यू कैन यूज द वर्ड इंटरनल कंट्रोल फर्स्ट थिंग एडिक्वेट इंटरनल कंट्रोल शुड बी देयर विच आर एक्सरसाइज बाय द बैंक देन इन केस ऑफ कंटेंजेंट लाइबिलिटी टॉक अबाउट टू लेटर्स लेटर्स ऑफ क्रेडिट एंड लेटर ऑफ कंफर्ट लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट एंड लेटर ऑफ कंफर्ट वेरीफाई द लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट वेरीफाई द लेटर ऑफ कंफर्ट सेकेंड थिंग इज थर्ड थिंग कंप्लीटनेस एंड रीजनेबलनेस कंप्लीटनेस ऑफ करंट कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटी एंड द रीजनेबलनेस ऑफ कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटीज बेस्ड ऑन योर प्रीवियस एक्सपीरियंस एंड करंट इयर एक्टिविटीज सो फाइव थिंग्स रिगार्डिंग कंटिजेंट लाइबिलिटी विच यू विल सी एज एन ऑडिटर इंटरनल कंट्रोल्स देन कम्स टू लेटर्स लेटर्स ऑफ क्रेडिट लेटर्स ऑफ कंफर्ट लेटर्स ऑफ क्रेडिट लेटर्स ऑफ कंफर्ट रीजनेबलनेस एंड कंप्लीटनेस देन कम्स द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट क्लेम्स अगेंस्ट द बैंक नॉट एक्नोलेज एज डेट so whatever be the claims how will you get to know about them from the management examine the relevant evidence that is the correspondence with lawyers workers and officers plus you can review the mom sir so mom means minutes of the meeting minutes of the meeting of the board of directors committees of board contracts and arrangements also ask the management what is the status of claims at the year end and after the year end you can view the subsequent events so this is a four step process first of all the relevant evidence first of all the relevant evidence very good sanya This is giving a feeling of SA five zero one. Very good litigations and claims, litigations and claims. Right. So litigations and claims also. Us me we have minutes of the meeting. Parte the we inquire from the management. This is the same thing. Inquiry from the management. Then you see SA five sixty subsequent events and relevant evidence. These are the four points. In case of guarantees, again internal control. Again internal control. But two things you need to check: form and register. form and register sir form means unused guarantee form should be under the custody of reliable officer check the guarantee register for marking of expired guarantees marking of expired guarantees plus check the guarantee register to ensure all the guarantees are included in disclosure and if any claim has arisen provision needs to be created as per as 29 why sir because if the claim arises it is now your liability if the claim arises it is your liability so provision should be created as per as 29 again in case of guarantee internal controls then two types of things forms and register the unused guarantee form should be under the custody of responsible officer check the guarantee register to see if any guarantee has expired mark of the expired guarantee in case any claim has arisen not expired provision needs to be created and the last point is check the register to see the completeness of guarantees now comes the concept of audit reports and this is the last concept we are taking up in this revision can we do yes sir sir audit reports in case of nationalized bank it is issued to the central government now my question to all of you who appoints the auditor of nationalized bank sir auditor of nationalized bank is appointed by the board of directors in consultation in the consultation with central government in the consultation with central government so nahi no, sorry 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 not in consultation with central government with the approval of rbi because it was the second point and i remember in the second point two entities were there banking company and this nationalized bank ka auditor they are appointed by the board of director with the approval of rbi now we get the third party is in case of nationalized bank report is issued to the central government now the report talks about the same things which we have already studied in 1433 whether the balance sheet give true and fair view whether the pnl give true and fair view any other matter so three points to very easy easy balance sheet pnl any other matter second point one gun whether proper information and explanation has been obtained by the auditor and three tree branches and the returns received from them whether or not returns from the offices and branches have been received for the branches not visited by them and the last point is whether the transactions done by the bank were in the powers of the bank so these were the four four points which you need to remember pnl and balance sheet give true and fair view any other matter which may be prescribed plus one gun information and explanation needs to be obtained whether whatever was whatever was required whether you have obtained as an auditor sir three three that is the branches proper returns have been received from the branches not visited by him and last point all the transactions done by the bank were within the power of the bank now comes the last point long form audit report 
Just remember the basic thing. It needs to be submitted to RBI within 60 days. Within 60 days of submission to RBI. What is the point? We can't now leave it like this. Let's read what it says. NFAR is to be given by the statutory branch auditor as well as the central auditor. Both the type of auditors need to give it. NFAR for branch auditor is in the form of questionnaire where observations and comments have to be provided on a range of matters like cash, bank balance, investments, advances and deposit. Basically covering everything. They are submitted by the branch auditor to the central auditor. So SBA submit the NFAR to SCA. Okay sir. Too much theory now so we need to make these charts and all. Consolidation is done at the head office level of all the NFAR and once this consolidation is done, it is placed before the audit committee board. It is placed before the audit committee of the board mentioning, mentioning the actions which are taken or proposed to be taken for rectification of irregularities. Then a copy of LFAR with the board's views is submitted to RBI within 60 days of submission of LFAR by the statutory auditors. This was the game of 60 days which I was trying to jump very fast. Okay? So remember, what was the game of 60 days? So once the LFAR is submitted to the board, the board along with the LFAR along with the views and what it will do with the LFAR needs to submit it within 60 days to RBI. So it is to be submitted to RBI within a period of 60 days of the date of submission of LFAR. In case there is a defraud at the bank, report to RBI. If the fraud amount is 1 crore and above, central government and chairman, MD and CEO of the bank. Sir, what are the other types of reports? What are the other types of reports which are to be submitted along with the audit report? LFAR, SLR, LFAR, SLR and ICFR. Report on ICFR as per 143.3i of Companies Act 2013, that is the internal controls over financial reporting. SLR means statutory liquidity ratio and LFAR means long form audit report. Then sir, what are the other reports? Treasury operations. So for this now, for intermediate, I have done one thing. Please remember this. So you just need to sit and report on these. You just need to sit and report on these three rhyming matters. Sir, what do you mean by sit? Uh, maybe bhul gaya. <laughs> S ka matlab kya tha, sir? I, I, I remember income recognition. Hai? I, I remember income, income recognition. Okay, sir. T for treasury operations. T for treasury operations. Then what does S stand for? Because S is not there in your. Just give me a second. Na, I will get it for you. Found it, found it, found it, found it. Ajo, ajo, ajo. S for serious irregularity. S for serious irregularity. Yes, sir, we did it. So, S for any serious irregularity which you found in the banking operations. S for serious irregularity. Serious irregularity in the banking operations. So, remember these six reports. It is enough. Okay, sir. Done, 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 done. Yes. So, just sit and relax and remember the three rhyming points. The SIT means serious irregularity, income recognition, asset classification, provisioning, T for treasury operations, SIT, relax and report on these matters. And this serious irregularity now, it is same as this point. This is an extension of this point that reporting on fraud as per 143 subsection 12. Got it? Got it? Got it, sir? Jaldi se batao, concurrent audit karna ya concurrent audit I should give for homework? Come on, concurrent audit also you, you want me to cover or you will do yourself? It should not take more than 10 to 15 minutes, I feel. Only 10 to 15 minutes matter of time. Come on. Foreign exchange. Achha, haan, foreign exchange is asked many times. Let's do it completely. Let's do it completely. Why leave other things? Let's do it all. Because I know ICI will be watching it. We'll see foreign exchange. Let's ask other topics. Scope of concurrent audit in the banks. What is covered in the scope, sir? Cash, deposits, advances, investments, foreign exchange, housekeeping. I think housekeeping should be written properly. Housekeeping. Okay? And then comes other items. So these are the points which have to be covered in uh, concurrent audit. So what are the points? Cash, deposits, advances. Advances is a, a other point. Cash, deposits, advances, investments, housekeeping and other items. Coverage of business and branches will depend on the decision of audit committee of the board of directors. What are the areas we have to focus on in the concurrent audit? First of all, cash. In cash, remember the four points. 
डेली कैश ट्रांजेक्शन शुड बी चेक विद रेफरेंस टू एबनॉर्मली हाई वैल्यू रिसीट एंड पेमेंट Proper accounting should be done of two things: inward and outward cash remittances, that is the cash receipts and cash payments. Currency chest transaction, that is the transactions with RBI. And last point is expense incurred with by cash payment involving sizable amount. High amount cash payment should be checked. So four points are abnormally high value receipts and payments. Similar point is the last point. High value cash payments, ठीक है वॉट एवर बी द कैश इनवर्ड एंड कैश आउटवर्ड शुड बी प्रॉपरली अकाउंटेड एंड ट्रांजेक्शन विद आरबीआई दैट इज द करेंसी चेस्ट ट्रांजेक्शन शुड बी प्रॉपरली अकाउंटेड नाउ कम्स इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट सर इट सेज परचेज एंड सेल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट शुड बी डन एट द रेट्स विच आर बेनिफिशियल टू द बैंक एंड द रेट्स विच आर एज पर द हेड ऑफिस इंस्ट्रक्शन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट सिक्योरिटीज इन द बुक्स शुड बी फिजिकली हेल्ड बाय इट Whatever be the securities in the books of account should be physically there with the bank. And the last point is comply with the RBI and head office guidelines. Please read on current audit. Don't spend too much time on it. ठीक है? Just read these points more and more. That's all that you need to do. Again, investments, purchase and sale as per the head office instruction and at the rates beneficial to the bank. Whatever investments are there in the books of accounts, they should be physically held by it. And the last point is comply with the RBI and head office guidelines. So what about the advances? I think we have already covered advances very much in detail regarding the internal controls, regarding the substantive audit procedure. If ICI asks regarding concurrent audit, it will be very, very bad. Okay, very, 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 very cunning of ICI. But please remember these points. Proper sanction of advances, whatever be the securities, it should be received and registered in the name of bank. These are copy points which we have already discussed. Then comes the concept of LC and BG. What do you mean by LC and BG? Letter of credits which are issued by the bank should be within the delegated power. Bank guarantees should be issued properly worded and recorded in the register. So four points were proper sanctioning of advances. Make sure the securities are received and registered in the name of bank. Two points of LC BG. LC means letter of credit should be within the power of the bank. BG means bank guarantees are issued that are properly worded and recorded in the register. classification as per the rbi guidelines and if there is any claim if there is any claim it should be submitted to ecgc and dicgc within a proper time sir who are these people these are the insurers got it got it sir let's recall it again proper sanction of advances security should be received and registered in the name of the bank lcbg sir lcbg what are the points letter of credit should be within the authority of the bank bank guarantee should be properly issued worded and Followed up, हमको देख के चलना पड़ेगा recorded in the register. And the last point are claims to ECGC, DICGC should be submitted within time. Now comes the concept of foreign exchange, which has been asked by ICI time and again. So in foreign exchange, the best way to remember it is through SFM. In SFM, you must have studied about the concept of letter of credit. Yes, sir. So check whether the foreign bills are negotiated under a letter of credit. Then you have studied about the concept of non-resident account, that is the NRO account. Check the FCNR foreign currency non-resident and another other NRO accounts where the debits and credits are permissible under the rules. Then what you see forward contracts. This is a very famous portion of forex extension and cancellation of forward contracts. Balances in the nostro account and nostro vostro account. Ensure that the balances in nostro account are within the prescribed limit plus reconciliation of nostro and vostro account. Are these three four points clear? Yes, sir. First thing. first thing first thing first thing letter of credit question foreign bills negotiated under letter of credit check the fcnr and another other non resident account then you see the concept of extension and cancellation of forward contract for purchase and sale of forward of foreign currency then you talk about the nostro account whether the nostro accounts are within the limits and then you check the reconciliation or verification of nostro vostro account everything should adhere to the guidelines of rbi and head office please remember this point i think in all cases you need to comply with the head office and rbi guidelines this is you can say a pervasive point this is a pervasive point which can be used everywhere now sir how is the concurrent auditor appointed now first of all who can be appointed as a concurrent auditor he he or she can be the internal staff or an external person he or she can be an internal staff or an external person it is the discretion of the bank if it is its own official that person should be tip top experienced knowledgeable trained and independent of the branch where the audit is conducted so he should be from the other branch different branch not from the branch where the audit is conducted in case the audit committee board decide that the maximum tenure 
मैक्सिमम टेन्योर ऑफ एक्सटर्नल कॉन्करेंट ऑडिटर जनरली इट इज नॉट मोर देन फाइव ईयर्स एक्सटर्नल ऑडिटर टेन्योर विल नॉट बी मोर देन फाइव ईयर्स दिस इज द बेसिक पीरियड विच इज देयर फॉर द रोटेशन ऑफ ऑडिटर ऑल्सो एंड no auditor will continue with a branch or business unit for period of more than 3 years so single branch tenure 3 years overall bank 5 years any omission or commission by the auditor any mistake by the auditor report to rbi and ici and appointment will be cancelled so please read these points if a case study is asked you should be able to deal with it let's revise it again let's recall it again who can be the concurrent auditor own staff or any external person own staff or any external person if it's a own staff he should be experienced he should be knowledgeable he should be independent of the branch where the audit is conducted external person can be appointed for a maximum tenure fixed by the bank what can be the maximum tenure overall for the bank 5 years for a single branch 3 years if any dikkat if any omission or commission is done by the auditor report to rbi and ici now comes the last point and i think good news bank audit completed good news sir bank audit is completed 1 hour and 30 minutes very very happy with you sir reporting system in case of concurrent audit reporting system in case of concurrent audit so it says prepare the reports as per a structured format there should be zone wise reporting that is not zone south zone east zone west zone whatever zones are there reported as per the that and findings should be reported to audit committee board ठीक है सर बिफोर यू सबमिट योर रिपोर्ट डिस्कस विद द मैनेजर बिफोर यू सबमिट द रिपोर्ट डिस्कस विद द ब्रांच मैनेजर वट एवर आर योर फाइंडिंग इट विल हेल्प यू कंसिडर द ऑपोजिट व्यू पॉइंट एंड गेट क्लैरिटी ऑन डाउट इफ यू फाइंड एनी इरेगुलरिटीज माइनर इरेगुलरिटीज आर टू बी रेक्टिफाइड इन टाइमली मैनर सीरियस इरेगुलरिटीज लाइक फ्रॉड सीरियस इरेगुलरिटीज लाइक फ्रॉड शुड बी रिपोर्टेड टू द कंट्रोलिंग ऑफिसिस और हेड ऑफिसिस वेन एवर फ्रॉडलैंड ट्रांजेक्शन आर फाउंड सी connecting point whenever fraudulent transactions are found please report to inspection and audit department of head office cvo that is the chief vigilance officer branch manager unless branch manager himself is involved so if he has only done the fraud why will you report to him amon once again structured format zone wise reporting before you submit the report check with the branch manager consider his opposite views then minor irregularities resolve quickly serious irregularities report to the head office in case there is a fraud report to big big people who are these big big people internal audit inspection and audit department at the head office cvo chief vigilance officer and the branch manager unless he is involved and at the end follow up action should be taken on your report follow up action on concurrent audit report should be given high priority by the controlling office or inspection audit department and rectification should be done without any loss of time theek hai so this is all about bank audit as committed it gets completed in 1 hour 27 minutes and trust me it is possible it is possible you just need to watch this video once or twice maximum again and if this chapter gets asked in exam i want you to get maximum out of it i want you to get maximum out of it please bas khushi khushi man laga ke padhte raho main aapko kitni baar bolta hu khushi se padhenge tabhi aage badhenge if we study happily then only we can grow ourselves just a matter of few days just a matter of some time give your best and become chartered accountant soon and make yourself and your parents proud theek hai if you have still not like this video do like the video subscribe the channel and let's catch up again for more such videos